Escape from Tarkov is one of the most difficult FPS games on the market, and that difficulty is in part due to the rules of the game. Your movement speed, stamina, and ability to detect enemies and penetrate their armor are just some of the rules built into the game. But as we are all painfully aware of, there are those out there willing to break these rules and use cheats to get ahead. But what motivates a hacker? What are their reasons and goals for engaging in this type of behavior? As many of you know, storytelling is at the forefront of what we do here at EUL Gaming. And today we're going beyond lore and telling the story of real people who operate in the fringes of what many consider to be normal in the gaming community. My goal is to neither humanize nor demonize these people, but simply to tell their story to increase the understanding of something that many consider to be taboo or outright despicable. What follows is an interview with a hacker. Tell me a little bit about yourself. I've been involved in the EFT community, Apex community, Rust community, a bunch of different game communities. Some cheeses, not, some others not, you know what I mean? Been doing all this shit for a long time. How long have you been gaming? Oh, since I was a kid, man. Since, uh, oh, probably, um... Probably since I was like five or six, four, probably younger than that, four with a Nintendo 64. I was playing Nintendo 64 back in the day and then nice. uh, got the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, had all that all the way up. So Yeah. When did you get into PC gaming? Uh, probably when I was about, mm, when I bought my first PC uh, in high school, I think I was 14. Uh, so obviously this interview is about uh, hacking, so we'll get right into it. Um, is Tarkov the first game you've you've used uh, cheats on? And nah. if no, Okay, when did you start? Uh, first game was uh, I think like Payday Two or something. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like it was like offline games like that. You know what I mean? Like games like that that were just fun to dick around in with your friends. Yeah. And um, that's where it all started. Was uh, was games like that? Not nothing for like nothing PVP related. GTA Online sometimes, but nothing like online. Like just shit like that is where it yeah. started. And I then um, I feel like you know a lot of people have. Uh, different views on cheating depending on if it's online against other players or if it's just like single player like I don't think anyone is going to care if you type in Rosebud in Sims and get a bunch of money exactly you know? no uh, but as soon as you start affecting other people's games it's like you know hold up wait a minute yeah uh, then your time and your effort gets taken away and that's yeah. what people really get upset. so what was like the first online game that you uh, use hacks in? Oh, um, probably Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 back on the Xbox. Um, or COD 4, actually, because COD 4 went, went ham back then, too. Yeah. And uh, back whenever COD 4, right, right whenever it got like kind of bad and they quit supporting it as much, there were just cheater lobbies everywhere. And that was like my first exposure to cheating and just unlock alls and then that type of stuff. Yeah. The crazy chromes and crazy camos and all that type of shit and jumping and fucking Johnny Appletree. I remember that shit. That shit was fucking hilarious. Did you get uh did you ever get banned in COD? No, no, never got no. banned in COD. Yeah. Um, not all the way up until um, Advanced Warfare. Or okay. not Advanced Warfare. What is this newest one? Modern Warfare? Modern uh, 2019 Modern Warfare. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 2019 Modern Warfare. So I'm sure you knew this question was coming, but uh, why do you use cheats? Like back in the day, originally for the funsies, uh, like for the offline games and stuff like that, like Payday 2, the, I'll use that as the best example because that's the first one off the top of my head. You get bored of base game content. And this was before all the DLC and all that other shit was out. And so we got really bored with base game content because we mastered all the maps and all this other shit. So we we're just like, fuck it, let's just spawn thousands of fucking things and all this other stuff, thousands of everything. With Tarkov, the reason I, I, I cheat is is for monetary gain. Um, it's it's exclusively for carries and things like that, and advertising for carries, RMT. Um, that's that's it for Tarkov, and I don't cheat in any other game currently. Uh, do you ever feel remorse or feel bad about cheating? Um, no, not really. No, it's like it, it's a part of the game. I mean, yeah, I take that back. I lied. I take that back. I feel bad whenever it's like fresh fresh players. Yeah, like like fresh players. It's like because then I feel like I'm ruining the game experience for them, and I want them to like start this game and fall in love with the game, um, like what I did when I first started playing the game. Legit, you know what I mean? Like it's a great game, but I, that's the only time I feel bad. Otherwise, it's like everybody else who plays the game. It's like you know this game. Cheaters are run rampant. It is what it is. Recently, in an interview with some big Tarkov content creators, uh, Nikita was asked what the number one issue was, which was slowing development of Tarkov. Or what consumed the most resources? And he said it was combating cheaters by a large margin. Uh, do you feel that this is true? No, not at all. 
Uh, like, not in the slightest. Um, there hasn't really been many changes for cheating in, like, probably, like, five wipes. Um, maybe four wipes. Uh, the last big change that, that they implemented was when they, they fucking implemented Battle Eye. Like, that was the, that was the big deal. After that, there hasn't really been much, like, going on. Like, no big wipes and big, huge ban waves. Nothing like that. Like, there's been detection bans, and they, they are doing a job at trying to detect them. Don't get me wrong. Uh, how robust or how good is Battle Eye? It sucks giant ass. It is horrible. <laughs> like, it is a horrible anti cheat. Is it kind of like, uh, oh, what's that uh, saying that, you know, like the job of the police isn't to stop crime, but to just like show up and do a report? Deal with the aftermath? Yeah. Yes, that, is, that is almost identical with what happens. Like, if you're not using a known injection method and you have your own shit, Battle Eye is, is, is blindfolded. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, is it mainly like, you know, they just basically, talking about BSG here, that they, basically they're trying to build detection tools and then they have to kind of go in and manually, like, find people or try to guess who's using cheats? So there's a few different ways that I, that they do it that I've that I know of so far just by my own personal experiences. Um, they have detections. They have like where they just go in and monitor accounts. Like where if you just get reported enough, you have a high enough KD, you know what I mean, things like that. Like you just get banned. There's those, and then there's like the detections where the where Battle Eye or whoever writing the detection software is doing to whatever they they detect the cheats. Those are the only two real bans. Okay, they they don't like they aren't very active in actually banning people. I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean? Like, we can make accounts mm -hmm. last for, like, six weeks with a 30, 30.0 oh, KDA. And so it's, like, they just don't actively do it enough. Do you ever feel like you're kind of, like, part of the problem? Oh, 100%. I know I'm part of the problem. <laughs> All right. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, what they need to do is, if the best way to do this, like, uh, like uh, this is probably a question later on. The best way to do it is, is they need they need to find a way to target RMTing. If they target yeah. RMT, then majority of cheaters will not cheat anymore. So the best way to do it is whenever you ban, uh, to me, it sounds scary at first, but this will solve the problem, is whenever you ban accounts that, have, that are using cheats, ban the accounts that go with them. Ban the people who've been playing with them. If you do that, all the RMT accounts are gone. All the people who do RMT, gone. And right. then now there's this giant stigma of, I can't do RMT because if one of these people gets caught and one of their cheats get detected or whatever reason, then I'm going to get banned now too. And yeah. nobody will buy it. No, that that makes just, sense. That makes sense. You just got to crack down on it one time and you'll lose a big part of the player base because a fuckload of people do RMT, like a lot more than you think. They'll be punished for a little bit, but all the people will be like, oh, damn, okay. And then you'll get a bunch of return players because there's not as many cheaters. Because they just can't afford it. You know what I mean? People just can't afford to cheat unless you have a lot of money. The economics of cheating is pretty fascinating. Um, are cheats and having to buy new accounts expensive? And, uh, like, what do you think it costs you on a monthly basis? Uh, this month, I've gone through four accounts. And so that's about, like, it's like 90 bucks total mm -hmm. uh, with with cheats and all that other stuff. So, it's, uh, like, in this month, I've probably netted probably, like, 400 bucks so far. Okay, so it's you're definitely in the green. Uh, yeah, for sure. Well, that's this month and a little bit of last month, like a week of last month, because I've been kind of a dumbass when I keep track of my time and stuff. I'm I'm in the green, yeah, for sure. And you know where you're at versus like someone who like really took this to the maximum. You know, are are you basically making as much as an arm tier could make, or could someone like really go go crazy with it? Like how much, how much, what do you think is the ceiling? Like how much could someone make in a month? Oh, somebody could make several thousand dollars in a month, man. Um, wow. uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen people make a lot of fucking money doing this stuff, but not just RMT though. They're, they're selling, they're selling like actual, like, like cheats and stuff that as well. Oh, okay. So it, it, the market for that is very large, but RMT, I have, I have no idea the potential for RMT. Like I would imagine that like doing carries and all that other stuff, if you have a team doing it. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's, yeah. it's very hard to manage as just one person. Um, but if you have a good team around you doing it all, um, among the team, uh, you could probably make like a few, a good, probably like 10 K a month if you do it correctly. Does basically the economy of cheating work kind of like any real economy? Like do, do basically, uh, let's say the guy who writes the cheats, the manufacturer, right? Does he yeah. sell directly to the end users or is there like a distribution no. system where there's like there's sellers system. and okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so there are sellers and resellers, and then there are resellers from those resellers. Um, it's just a matter of, like, how well you're connected. You know what I mean? Like, how close to the source code can you get? And that's going to be the best price normally. Do you are you aware of any BSG employees that kind of help cheating? Well, we've heard we've I've heard a couple stories um, in the community of a couple employees helping out with accounts and um, leaks of uh, of methods that that they're gonna get detected and things like that to specific people that are that are very well respected and well vouched for in the community. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they, they have some merit, but at the end of the day, it's a shady community. Um, so, yeah, you never really know, you know, I've, you know, playing Tarkov and and other games, um, you know, a lot of times people say that, you know, they don't want to ever they don't have an incentive to truly ever end cheating because at the end of the day, you know, they're still selling more and more accounts. Yeah, I literally had just had this conversation on stream. Um, tar uh, BSG is making a fuckload, like, and I like, sorry for cussing, but I mean yeah, like, yeah. like a lot of money, like a lot of money from from accounts that are being bought by cheaters. If you think about it, if I say I make one account last a month, right? That's in a year. That's twelve accounts minimum. If I get manual bans and detection bans, I'm like just me alone. I've gone through four this month alone. Hmm. And so, you know what I mean? Like, I've had to buy accounts. A couple of them have been legit. Resellers don't always have accounts. And so you have to buy a legit account because that money doesn't stop coming in. You know what I mean? People don't stop wanting carries. You got to keep it going. And so, like, BSG is making a lot, a lot of money. And then the people who get their accounts cracked and they can't get them back because they're banned or whatnot, their odds are going to buy a new account. How widespread is cheating in Escape from Tarkov? Are there hackers everywhere or are they kind of rare? Um, Different maps, it varies. But... Like on labs, you're getting a hacker like probably two to three out of every ten raids. At least like a like a like a rage hacker like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, walls and ESP, uh, probably like fifty percent of raids on every map. There's somebody with walls or ESP on the map. Yeah. Like radar, like radar of some sort or walls. The almost fifty percent of the lobbies. Hacking is definitely a taboo within the gaming community. Uh, do you feel like it's difficult to meet new friends online, or are the majority of your online friends also using cheats? And uh, kind of with this is, has the realization that you were using hacks lost you any online friends? I'll break this down into a few segments. Um, so the first part of that um, is no, it, it doesn't inhibit me from from making friends online. Um, I'm not like a closeted cheater. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not ashamed of what I do, and like yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not worried about it. It's not that big of a deal. You either like it or you don't. And most of the people, like, you know what I mean, most people feel very indifferent to it. And then, um, has it lost me any friends? No. And do all my friends exist in the cheating world again? No. Um, a lot of like for Tarkov, yes and no. That's kind of like a, it's a it's a pretty big mixed uh, mixed pool of people who cheat and people who don't. For all my other games, no, not at all. It doesn't affect it at all. Um, it, most people, like I said, the people are just feel very indifferent to it. it. Doesn't affect them, so I mind it, you know. Yeah, I feel like it would vary, kind of depending on the game. Um, yeah, for sure. Because like, if it's Call of Duty, you know, like I think if I had a friend tell me, "Hey, I, I, you know, use wall wall hacks or something like that in Call of Duty." I'd be like, all right, you know, not really my thing, uh, but, you know, I guess you do you. But, like, Tarkov, it's, like, it's this very hardcore, you know, everyone struggles to get ahead. Um, very, very hard game. And yeah. so people can get very emotional sometimes about, you know, cheating. Um, that, you know, it's already hard enough, and this makes it almost impossible, and blah, 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 blah. So are all hackers created equal? Or is there, like, a subculture of hackers that are, like, better or worse than you? Like, are there some that, like, you know, is there, like, a, a level of hacking or, like, a tool that, like, even you Man, won't use? There are tools that I can't even get access to, okay? Yeah. Um, there are, there, like, there's, there is, like, a, there's, like, a, like, a cast system when it comes to cheaters, okay? There's the devs up at the top, and they determine who gets access to everything. Mm -hmm. And then, but, but there's also like a little hidden, like black market that they only do private stuff. Okay. Like you have to know people, they have to know you, you have to get vouched by several people and then you can get access to their community. And then if you're cool and they're chill, they, they agree that you're chill, then you get access to their cheats. Yeah. So, and, and, and this, these cheats are like, like a thousand dollars a month. Wow. And yeah, so it's like, it, it's for people who are 
very very determined or like sometimes they're like most of the time it's like a thousand dollars lifetime four hundred dollars a month um and so like my little exaggeration but like still crazy insane amounts of price right for a month of a of a, of a subscription of something yeah and so there's those people and then there's people like like me who i'm kind of like kind of in the middle i have you know what i mean i have access to kind of some private cheats i have access to pretty much all the public cheats all that kind of stuff and there are people below me who who are like like you know what I mean? Like little like they they don't they don't these are like scammers and people who are just now getting into the community. They're kind of all viewed the same. You know what I mean? Because you because like new accounts are new accounts. People you don't know or, or they could be anybody, and so it's like you you kind of treat them all the same. Uh, do you think that hacking is a slippery slope, meaning that once you start, it can be difficult to stop, or that if you start cheating in one game, you'll want to cheat in another? I mean, the window's there. Like to me, what it comes down to is if if you're dog shit at the video game, okay. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I've never met anybody who was super insanely good. Say, you know what? I want to hack. Like it just doesn't happen, right? Unless there's, unless there's like for some reason you have some other, like uh, some other gain, monetary gain. Fucking, you have a, a ability to like climb on Twitch or something. You know what I mean? People don't hack for no reason. Like other games, uh, I don't, I don't cheat in other games. Like just other, I just don't. You know what I mean? All the games that I play, I play them because I enjoy them and they're fun, not because I want to cheat in them. Escape from Tarkov, I don't think it's a slippery slope. I, I have an account that I play. Um, legit on um because i like i said i do thoroughly enjoy this game it's a great game yeah uh, and like i have fucking four thousand hours on that account with a decent kda it's like an 8.5 or something like to answer your question simply no um but to, to some other people it could be yeah it really seems like you know the financial aspect of it is really the the motivating factor and that uh you know if there really is no financial incentive to do it, then people just won't other than maybe like dabbling like one weekend, someone might pick something up if it's cheap enough just to like, you know, get some giggles. But yeah. after that, you know, they're not going to just cheat all the time. Um, it's really because it's, it's a source of income. Generally. Yeah. Most of the cheaters that I know do carries and things like that. Um, few and far between, you will get the people who just have the money to cheat whenever they want because it's like, they just want to. Yeah, they're just not good at the game because that, that happens quite a bit. So China and Russia are the two biggest markets for this. Little tip for everybody, like uh, whoever gonna actually see this and hear it and stuff. Um, and the the best servers to stay on are Central U.S. Stay off the coastal servers. Um, if you stay off the coastal servers, you stay away from like everybody foreign. Yeah, and a lot of the foreign people are carries. That's where that's where the biggest markets for it are, um, and that's where the most people who who do it are from are from China and Russia. So if you stay off the coastal servers, you'll have much better raids. Some major game publishers and even some world governments have talked about making hacking and online gaming a criminal offense or a civil offense with huge financial penalties. Does this worry you? And do you think that cheating in gaming should be unlawful? I think it should be unlawful. It's not really like like I get it. It ruins an experience for some people, but it's it's like it, it doesn't make any sense that people should face actual like federal crimes and federal lawsuits or just civil suits in in case like you know what I mean just actual punishments for things in a video game that a that a non government entity controls on online gameplay. You can you yeah. can just log off. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to be there playing the game. You could just sign off if you don't want to get killed by a cheater. Yeah, I think the the argument that a lot of times that they make is is two reasons. One, uh, with the rise of esports and stuff like, you know, big payout championships, uh, big esport teams and stuff that they're starting to view it more like an actual sport and ch online cheating to be kind of like doping. Um, and then the other component is that the game developers themselves are trying to lobby for it because it's like uh, they view it as being harmful to their product that, you know, they might lose a portion of their customer base because of, of cheaters or whatever. Absolutely. Okay. So the, when it comes to online esports and things like that, I, uh, I wholeheartedly support that. Yeah. Like that shit should be a criminal offense. Whenever you're actually paying, like you're competing for money against other people, like that's their livelihood that could potentially be, you know what I mean? The difference between paying somebody's house payment and not paying their house payment. Like you shouldn't, that is not allowed. Yeah. I, I think that should 100% be punishable. But for when it comes to the like a company's product, do you go to jail for writing a bad review about modifications you put on your BMW? You know what I mean? Like it's it's not because I alter your product using my own like my own code and things like that. As long as I'm not copywriting stealing like like copywritten code, you know what I mean? As long as I'm not stealing from them, I'm I'm not committing a crime, dude. I'm just modifying your product. Sorry if it makes it look bad. Yeah. Do a better job writing your code. 
Has hacking in games ever had a negative impact on your life, such as lost friends, threats of violence, or caused any kind of <laughs> mental health issues for you? Okay. Sorry, I laughed so hard, bro. I got... Hey, we're Dude, asking these motherfuckers. We're, we're asking the hard questions here, right? <laughs> these motherfuckers, bro. The last fucking last fucking like like an hour ago, last stream, the redditors. I mean, I got I got threats that they hoped my son got cancer and raped. I got Jesus. threats. Yeah, I I got threats that they hope I go jump off a bridge. They said they hope that I get murdered. That like it was it was it was nuts how much people are willing to like actually commit real crimes for cheating in a video game. But hey, that is what it is. Do you think that I mean, obviously, uh, all that kind of stuff gets said all the time on the internet. But has there ever been a time where you kind of thought that someone may have actually acted on um, what they were saying? No, absolutely not. Um, yeah. the, the, the people on the internet are talk. If they do, like, hey, uh, I got that thing on me. I promise. <laughs> the the you know the big uh, issue for me you know if for any kind of content creator if you're streaming or basically actually just doing almost anything online is that you know um, it's not so much of an issue now but swatting was kind of a big issue a few years back oh, and yeah, I think it's kind of died down a little bit now but that's kind of that's what I worry it, yeah. yeah that's what I worry about but I mean hey if I get swatted I get swatted bro like the <laughs> they gonna get my ass. They'll say it's not the first time I've been arrested. Well, probably won't be the last. Like, not yeah. the first time I've been at the other end of those cops' guns. Like, it is what it is. Uh, one question uh, often asked by people who are killed by a hacker is, do they really find it fun? Is hacking a fun and enjoyable experience for you, or does it get bore, uh, boring and dull after a while? Um, depends on the scenario. If I'm just sitting there doing the same thing over and over again for no reason, yeah, it gets it gets a little boring. Um, but if I'm doing carries and shit like that, I, it's not that boring now. It's enjoyable and there's a reason for it. Like whenever you really break it down, I'm getting paid to play a video game. So I enjoy the shit out of it. You know what I mean? And so does it kind of feel like work sometimes? Uh, whenever you do a fuckload of raids in a day, yes, yeah, it does. It gets very tiring. Like whenever you're 30, 40 raids in, like with people, it's like, man, like, just like, like, I just want to chill. Just leave me alone. Do you have any advice on how to avoid hackers or, uh, you know, are there certain maps or areas, times of day, anything like that to avoid? Yeah, east and west coast, try to stay off your coastal servers. Try to stay as, as inland as you can. Labs, good luck. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's a, literally a coin flip on labs. Just if you're on good servers, you can only hope. Um, if one of your buddies gets killed by a cheater or you think there's a cheater in the map, drop your gun and just wiggle. Okay. <laughs> just drop your gun and wiggle. Like, if you drop your gun and wiggle, a lot of the times, sometimes people will, if, unless they're doing a carry or something like that, they might just leave you or they'll come make friends with you and try to give you loot. Like, like some, a lot of the, a lot of the community is pretty fun. So they're, they're, they're just, a lot of times they're just killing you because they just don't want you to kill them. And as long as you're just like not a threat, the, they might leave you. Yeah, if you if you if you make yourself not a threat and make it known that there's that you know there's probably a cheater in the lobby and you're trying to be friends, you know what I'm saying? Like, drop all your shit if if like it's a carry or something, just drop all your shit and run away. You know what I'm saying? And like, you you can get lucky. That's the best way. You know what I mean? Well, this has been uh, very very insightful. Um, I really liked a lot of your responses. I just appreciate the interview, man. Yeah, absolutely, dude. All right, man. Well, hey, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for your time, and uh, you have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. All right, later. Take it later.